These are the most common money blocks that all people get. Now, just by watching this video, you will identify at least five blocks that you've had this whole time that have been making it impossible for money to come to you. When you're manifesting money, yes, it's being created in some world somewhere, but when you have a block, it's like an invisible barrier that prevents money from being able to get to you. So it's like having Amazon packages stack up outside of your doorstep, but it can't actually come in to your own life. And you may even have had the experience where you've been wanting something, wanting something, and then somebody like in your field gets the exact thing that you wanted, the exact piece of press, the exact client. This is all symptomatic of having money blocks. So let's go right into it. I've been teaching a money workshop since 2017 called Breaking Broke, which has helped thousands of people attract more money into their life. But the problem is, is that after teaching this for the last six years, I realized that none of the tools that help you to get over the brokenness and attract the money that's been held up in your life to you, none of these tools are, are the same as the ones that are needed to actually build wealth. And so what they say a lot is like, what got you there will keep you there. The tricks and the tools that get you to 500K are what are going to keep you at 500K. So I'm ready to teach a higher level <laughs> of wealth creation, but there's a law in spirituality that says that you can never go to the next level without putting other people at the level that you're at. So this is me taking that bestseller workshop, compressing it down into one video, and it is only as good as your ability to take action on it. So if you listen to these things, oh, no, very cool, but I don't wanna not give away my work for free because I'm afraid of having an uncomfortable situation, you will stay blocked. Getting comfortable with any one of these blocks that I outline here will guarantee that you will not grow. So I want you to think really hard before you dismiss anything that you hear in this video because it could be costing you that paycheck that you know you deserve. So let's start. First thing you gotta know is the, line of, the law of divine compensation. And the law of divine compensation says that you came here with unique gifts and if you share them with the world, you will be compensated for them. Now, this doesn't say that if you're an accountant, you will be compensated fairly unless accounting is the unique gift that you bring to the world, like, like my accountant is. So that's just a law. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. The law is the law, and that's just the bottom line. Now, the number one block that every single person gets is straight up denial. And denial is refusing to accept that you do not have enough money to do the things that you want to do. And this can masquerade as like a false sense of gratitude, like, oh, I'm so grateful that I have my car to sleep in. No, you're not. No, you're not, but you're in denial. You refuse to accept that you actually want to have a house, that you actually want to improve your conditions. And you're starting to say things like, oh, money's just energy or abundance isn't actually money. All right, that's fine, but don't sit around and ask me why you're still living in your car. It's because you have a money block and you're in denial about the fact that you actually need money. So we're just going to get very, very simple here. Three categories of money. Not enough, which is you don't have enough to pay your bills enough, which is you have enough to pay your bills, but never more, not enough for pleasure practices, not enough for savings, nothing like that. And the third is more than enough. And more than enough would kind of be like having a plate of food that's so, you know, but you don't have to eat every single bite because there is more than enough. You have money in savings, you have money for other creative projects, you have money for pleasure practices, you have money for vacation, you have money in savings, all investments, all of these different things. So the number one block is denial. I want you to identify where you are at. And if you are at more than enough, Congratulations, you have the biggest block of all because if you don't stay hungry, you can never get more. So if you're at more than enough, just leave and come back when you're ready to actually get more in your life. You can learn more about this in my work on eroticism. The next biggest block is free. Now look at me. If you are giving your work away for free, the universe is compelled to not pay you because you do not see your gifts that you were given and nobody else was, you don't see those as valuable. And when you don't see those as valuable enough to actually put a price on it and stand by that without wavering, your customers are forced to reflect that to you. You don't value it enough to charge for it. They don't value it enough to pay for it. 
this is a big problem. Now, if somebody comes to you and says, oh yeah, I can't afford it, maybe I should just do this for free or whatever, it's a test and you're going to say this. It is against my spiritual contract to give away my work for free. I cannot contribute to the chronic undervaluing of gifts that exists in the spiritual community. This is how much it is, thank you. And you will get better and better when it comes to DMs and things like this, where when somebody says, I'm thinking about working with you, but, where you just say, this is the time slot I have available. If not, give me your next best three and I will work to meet you on that. But very little communication between, I would like to pay you and here's how you can do that. If you're giving away your work for free anywhere, the universe is compelled to not pay you. So stop it. The next block is bartering. Now the universe, people are not going to like this, but people that don't like this will stay very, very broke. So it's not my business. You can fuck around and find out if you want, but I'm telling you, I have, and I see it happening every single day. You decide, do you wanna be wealthy, yes or no? If you wanna be wealthy, you'll listen to what I'm saying so that you can move forward. You cannot go to a second level of spirituality until you reach a certain financial threshold that is called in magic the good householder. This means somebody that is easily able to provide for themselves and their family and their business based on their creative gifts. This is stop two in the Purusharthas of Hinduism. Step one, Dharma, recognize your unique gifts and share them. Step two, Artha, charge for it. Specifically charge for it. Now you don't get access to higher spiritual teachings, not on ayahuasca, not higher teachers, not higher books, none of that, until you reach the financial level that allows you to genuinely care for other people. You cannot genuinely care for other people when you're scrambling to make money. So if you're like, I don't care about money, I just wanna progress spiritually, you cannot progress to the second of three levels of spiritual teachings without achieving this base financial level of good householder. The next two purusharthas are kama, which is the true nature of desire. The last one is moksha, which is liberation, period. So the next block that everybody gets is bartering and universe only recognizes one money system at a time. So if you, are, if you need cash money, then you can't be accepting paintings and body work as a form of, of payment. This is not energy exchange. The people that are like energy exchange, do you want their life? Do you want their life? Are they goals? Because the people that are goals in my world would never call money energy exchange. It took us a long time to get to the money system so that you don't have to trade your unique work that you set a price to for something that you don't want that you cannot pay your bills with. If you cannot pay your bills with massages and poor paintings, then I suggest you stop receiving them as payment. You are sending a conflicting message to the universe. If you are bartering anywhere or someone invites you to barter, no matter how tempting it is, you are going to say it's against my spiritual contract to barter. It should never be inconvenient to pay each other. How about you pay me and I'll pay you. Even if I am sending the same $100 bill back and forth like I do when I meet with my projector once a month, we do that as a gesture to each other that it is never inconvenient to pay one another. Are you in business or are you not in business? If you are not in business, your bank account and life reflects it. If you are in business, it shows in every single thing that you do. No matter how abundant you feel, you are never convincing anybody that you are at a higher financial and spiritual level than you are. So clean it up. The next one is bargaining. So bargaining is making deals with the universe, like, hey, I'll stop drinking if you give me money. Excuse me, no, you were supposed to stop drinking a long time ago. You were supposed to do that for you. No one's gonna pay you to go to the gym. Nobody's gonna pay you to meditate. Nobody's gonna pay you, well, actually, if you're in my publishing course, somebody will pay you to write your book, but these are all things that you are meant to do for yourself. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. 
These bargains with the universe will do nothing but weaken your faith in yourself and the universe. The universe doesn't play this little bargaining game with you. Do your best for yourself and watch how everything else falls into line, but do not think you're getting anywhere by cutting little deals with the universe. It doesn't say anywhere that that's how that works. The next one is resistance to money. This is one of the biggest blocks. Now resistance is one of, you know, if you guys have done my courses, you know that I can't stand words like surrender, allowing, resistance, forgiveness, unconditional love, acceptance. I can't stand words that are common in the spiritual community that it, they're like life lessons and we're just breezing by with these words when it's like, wait, if, if you have resistance to money, like what does it mean? What does that mean for you? <laughs> so resistance is made up of jealousy. So resistance to money, this resistance you have, it says, ugh, money, go away is made up of jealousy. Now, the thing about jealousy is that if you ever tell anyone they're jealous, they say, me, I'm not jealous. So jealousy can be difficult to diagnose, but you always know you're jealous of somebody if you're judging them. Now, we're speaking to the spiritual community here that says, what, I don't judge anybody. Yes, you do. Think about all of those people that you go do surveillance on on social media, but you don't actually follow them. You lurk, but you don't like. You're watching everything that they're doing and saying, hmm, when karma catches up with her, it's gonna be serious, or hmm, Chanel, I don't know if I would have gone that way. There's so many better ways to invest your money. You're jealous of all of them. Now, these are the mechanics of jealousy. You want something, and you think that just because she has it, that you never will. So let's say that you really, 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 really want a Loewe coat and she has it. And you say, well, she has it, so I'm never going to get it. That's a lie. That's a lie. She has it. It's a sign that yours is on the way. But when you have jealousy, which is the block of the Vishuddha chakra, you try to make yourself feel better about believing this lie. She has it, so I won't. So you try to cover it up with all of these judgments and tell yourself that you don't want something you actually do want. This is all existing within yourself and this is building up resistance slowly but surely. So you start judging and you say, well, some of us invest our money in spiritual things and fashion is not spiritual. And who would spend $6,000 on a coat when there's all of this? And I don't spend $6,000 on a coat because I have a real job and I'm in the real world and jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. And jealousy is like having a beautiful voice and stinky, horrible breath. It doesn't matter what you say, every word that comes out of your mouth stinks and no one wants to tell you about it. No one wants to tell you about it. And again, if you tell somebody, I think you're jealous, they say, me, no, I'm not jealous. And you become defensive of it. Now, jealousy starts as a lie she has it, so I won't. And then becomes a defense of your own supremacy. I'm better than her because I don't spend money the way that she does, even though I really want to. So all of this jealousy creates resistance. Resistance is made out of jealousy. And if you can just accept that you want that, that'll be the first step. That'll help to override some of your denial that you love living in a car and you hate couture. The interesting thing is that if you want what they have, do what they do. So the thing that you're judging them the most for is actually what you probably most need to do in business. Let's segue for a second and talk about one of the main just tactical, not esoteric blocks that people will have when they're early in their spiritual game is somehow thinking that sales are not spiritual, that like, you know, selling annoys people or gets on people's nerves. And these are all the people that you've judged. Oh, how can you be selling me to me again? 
This is probably what you need to get the most comfortable with. So resistance, just repeat after me. The more you sell, the more you sell. The more you sell, the more you sell. Get comfortable with it, there's no way around it. I usually recommend people follow all of the Kardashians and see how many people love being sold to by them literally all day long. Sales are spiritual and nobody got rich without using spiritual tools. I've been teaching the same ritual since 2017. Every single time I did it, my, my wealth at least, ha at least doubled, if not quadrupled. Every time I skipped it, my wealth halved. This happened to me two years in a row. Went down by half and then that half was halved again because I was like, I don't feel like I should do this anymore. Never again will I make this mistake. Now the next key block is waiting when it's your turn. There is a move that you can make. There is a move that you can make. You just don't wanna do it because it's outside of your comfort zone. So you're saying, universe, give me a sign when it's already your turn. You're waiting and say, go universe, it's your turn. No, it's your turn. And everybody is waiting for you to just light a fire under your ass and get it done. So waiting when it's your turn, one of the biggest blocks. Two more. The next one is subbing to money. So money is submissive, not dominant. Now, I don't know if you guys know this in eroticism, but like if you force something that's submissive to dominate, you're gonna get the worst behavior that you've ever seen. Kind of like letting a dog or a child run your home. They'll be pissing all over the floor, making a mess. Now listen, when your husband, your child, your dog, or your financial state is pissing all over the place. They don't look like the fool, you do, you do. And when you are subbing to money, saying money, please come to me, I'm worthy, I promise. You look like the fool, you look like the fool. Money wants a dominant hand that says, you come here, go there now. We're doing this, you come here, you come to me. Money wants to surrender to you so that you can do with it what you will. But when you are making money dominant and you're saying, money, I'll do anything for you, I'll surrender, it gives you the worst behavior of all time. This is what I want. This is what I'm going to do for it. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people think that dominance is going over something, hey, bend over. No, dominance is responsibility. Taking responsibility for the whole situation, prepping the room, getting the tools. The dom is in the flow state. It's not about their pleasure. It's about their responsibility and the sub's pleasure. They are organized. They are somewhere else. This isn't like bend over. I'm going to have my way with you. That's not the vibe. That's not what dominance is. And most spiritual people don't want to assume that level of responsibility because they are immature. They want to help the world as long as all they have to study is their tarot cards and their crystals and their manifesting and their ayahuasca and the things that they like to do. They are willing to be of service into the, into the world as long as they get to do whatever they want, as long as they get to eat sugar all the day. That's not the move. That's not the move. Grow the fuck up. Faith without works is delusion. And we have all met Delulu spiritual people on our path. Do you wanna be one of them? Or do you wanna be an example to the whole world that being spiritual doesn't mean that you have to be broke, wearing patchwork pants, living in your car, and talking about how abundant you are when you're clearly not? And the last question, I mean, the last block is asking toxic questions. So you are probably unconsciously all the time asking, why am I broke? Why don't I have money? And you're engaging with the matrix that always reflects the question and answer sessions that are going on in your mind. So instead of asking yourself like, why am I broke? You need to flip that around and ask yourself, why am I rich? And I'm gonna tell you right now why I'm rich. I'm rich because I got rid of my money blocks a long time ago and started pursuing wealth. I accepted that it was something that I wanted even if nobody else around me wanted it. I did a ritual every single year at the beginning of the year to bring wealth into my life and I didn't just get those ideas, I did something with it. I never studied my faith without setting my works in equal measure. I diversified my assets, I stopped selling one-on-one -on -one and focused on group work and I am constantly learning new systems 
system and systems and tools to make this work successful. I was not waiting for the universe to come and save me. I was not waiting for a man to come and save me. I said, let me assume that this is all on me, that it is to me to take every single step, but co-creation means that God will show me the way, but I am willing to take every step by myself. I accept that I am here to work and I will do this better and better each and every time until my life is done. When I say that I'm an overnight millionaire, there are no such thing as overnight millionaires. This does not exist. Manifesting money does not exist. We can remove the obstacles and all of that money held up by IRS checks, clients that don't pay you money in your couch. All of these things will come to you, but when it comes to creating wealth, you need to create a new road, populate it with traffic, and constantly strategize new ways to get new cars on that road. There are three levels of business. Level one is the same level as spirituality level one, where you're, it's all about you and your value and am I worth it, can I do this? Level two of entrepreneurship, level two of spiritual sales is being so secure in your value, generating money so easily that you can start to strategize new ways of growing to serve more people than you ever thought imaginable. Now, if this is interesting to you, I would like to invite you to my masterclass on the blocks to wealth. These were the blocks to manifesting money. Now I'd like to show you the blocks to wealth. The link is in the description. Thank you very much. Let's recap what those were so that you don't forget. Number one, law of divine compensation. You are here to be paid. Two, denial. Quit acting like you don't need money. You fucking do and you know it. Three, free. Immediately stop giving your work away for free. Four, bartering. We are no longer accepting body work. It's against our spiritual contract. Five, bargaining. Do what you know you should do and quit striking deals with the universe. It's not fucking listening to you. Resistance. You're jealous and everyone knows it but you. Waiting when it's your turn, it's your turn now. I don't need to pull your tarot cards to see that for you. It's your turn now, you just don't wanna go. Subbing to money, everybody can tell. And if you are subbing when you're meant to be dominant, you're never gonna be satisfied in your life, period. Finally, asking toxic questions and getting toxic answers. I told you, there is no manifesting. There's only right work done correctly over and over again until something succeeds. So now I'm asking you, would you like to evolve or would you like to repeat? I have seen plenty of people say, I don't really think this works. I'm not gonna take this course and stay in the exact same spot for five years until they suck it up and start doing the work. So will you be coming to this masterclass where you learn about what real money magic is? Or will I find you right here where we left off? Choice is yours.